Welcome, Brandon, to Real Talk with Crystal. I'm really excited to have you on and to pick your brain a little today uh, because I'm not sure if you're familiar with my story, but finding my voice and learning how to use it has been what I say, one of my greatest obstacles and also one of my greatest medicines in this lifetime. So if you asked me or told me like five years ago that I even have a podcast, I wouldn't have believed you because I had so many blocks around my voice. So this is a topic that I'd love to dive into. So to begin, uh, do you want to tell us a little bit about your journey? And I'm curious if you've always been comfortable using your voice. Of course, because, well, first of all, thanks so much for, for sharing that story. And I'm super glad you did decide to share your voice because I'm sure that tens of thousands of people are are, are happy for it as well. Thank you. So, of course, of course, my pleasure. So, yeah, definitely. I mean, I struggled so much with my voice. Let, let's go through a couple of those, it's probably 10 of them, but I'll go through the main three. So the mm -hmm. first one is I was born and raised in a city called Montreal, Crystal in Canada. And for those who don't know, Montreal is a city where you need to know how to speak French, which mm -hmm. is a language I didn't really know. So my whole life, I studied in a language I didn't know, and I presented in one I didn't know either. So when I was in first grade or second grade, I would look at the classroom and go, uh, bonjour. Mm -hmm. And that was my life uh, growing up as a kid. That's one. The second one is I have a crooked left arm. So when I was younger, I had a surgery done. So I had a big cast when I was walking around as a kid. So imagine not being able to make friends because I didn't, I didn't know how to speak French <laughs> and I had a big cast. And the third one is I studied in accounting my whole life. So, so definitely far mm -hmm. from what I do today. Yeah. Wow. Well, I resonate because I grew up in Vancouver and oh, I never awesome. learned French because my mom's actually French. I never learned it because it's actually really? quite difficult language. <laughs> And I actually had a lisp too when I was younger. And for many years, I couldn't pronounce my name. It was, I actually used to say fiddle. <laughs> so, <laughs> yeah, that was something that I got made fun of like a lot for. Um, but yeah, I find that really interesting. And what made you want to develop your voice more and focus on this area? Yeah, for sure, Crystal. So, so what happened essentially is I went to business school. So it's not a not a not a sexy or interesting of a story. So, but hopefully it gets interesting a bit later. And and the goal was never to be a YouTuber or to make like videos on this or to be some coach. Mm -hmm. You know, my goal is to be an executive at a company. That's what I was designed to do mm -hmm. my whole life. You know, I didn't grow up for a lot of money, and and much like most immigrants, I saw education as my way out. So so mm -hmm. I studied accounting, and and I did these things called case competitions. Think of it like professional sports, but for nerds. So while other guys, yeah, it's kind of the only way to explain this. So other guys my age were probably playing football or basketball or baseball or some other dangerous thing. I wasn't really into that. So I did presentations competitively, and that's how I learned how to speak. But then as I got older, I started coaching the students in those programs on how to speak effectively. Not because I was great at it, but because we didn't have anyone better. So I started helping them for free mostly. And then it led to master talk because I realized that everything that was in my head wasn't available online, the internet. So I started making videos in my mom's basement and one thing led to another and it turned into something I never thought it would. Wow. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it. Why do you feel like there's so much of a fear around using our voice and why this is something that so many of us have underdeveloped voices? I, I feel the reason is because, you know, before when I used to get that, that question, I used to just answer, I don't know, where does the fear of communication come from? San Diego, LA, you tell me. <laughs> but I think the, what that's changed to and evolved, because I've gotten a little bit smarter since then, fortunately, for your audience, <laughs> is I think that we're conditioned to believe, Crystal, that communication is a chore. And I'll explain why. Where do we learn how to speak? You know, you, you talked about it a little bit in your story with the lisp and the kids making fun of you. I had something similar with my broken left arm. So I guess we're, we're kind of cut, cut from the <laughs> same cloth. <laughs> Maybe it's a different fabric. But, but the lightning thread is the same, which is we learn how to speak in the education system, elementary school, high school. But the problem is there's three different problems with those presentations, Crystal. The first one is 100% of them are mandatory. We don't wake up one morning and say, hey, Crystal, you want to get breakfast and present all day? Says nobody <laughs> ever. Nobody says that. So that's one. 
The second one is every presentation is different. So it's never, Crystal, what are you excited about? Are you excited about having conversations? Do you like to talk about spirituality? Do you want to talk about those topics? No, that's not how it works. It's, you got to talk about Shakespeare. I'm like, what is this? What, what are we shaking? Renaissance? Mm -hmm. Like, you know, all these random presentations that you don't really have any say over. So that's number two. Mm -hmm. And then number three, you think I'd be done by now? We're, like, we're just getting started. <laughs> the third thing, Crystal, is every presentation is tied to a punishment. So if you don't do a great job, if Brendan doesn't do great in, in his French presentation, his Spanish presentation, he, lose, he loses 30% of his grade. So that's mm -hmm. why we see communication like a chore versus what it's supposed to be a tool for impact. Mm, interesting. So you think if we brought in somehow more pleasure into communication that we would enjoy it more and it would lessen the fear around using our voice? 1,000%. And that's why mm -hmm. the, the question I always start with is, is quite simply this. How would your life change if you were an exceptional communicator? Hmm. Right? Or, or rather, in your case, which I think is the more relevant question, how would the world change if you chose to share your voice with other people? If you mm -hmm. chose to share your message with other people? And when I start asking myself that question, it starts, it starts to learn or rather recognize that communication is, is meant to help other people rather than seeing it as some chore, like doing the dishes. And that's mm -hmm. when we start to get excited about it. Mm, interesting. Yeah, I read somewhere, I can't think of where right now, but I read that the power of your voice must match the power of your dreams. And I remember when I read that, I was like, I had no voice. I'm like, oh shit. <laughs> Like, this is why my dreams are manifesting. I need to work on my voice. But it made sense because I'm like, how am I going to, you know, accomplish all these amazing things when I can't even really use my voice? Like, I couldn't even call the doctor. Calling the doctor, like, literally gave me sweats. I'm like, oh, my God, I can't, like, use my voice. It's, you know, there was so much, like, around it. Um, do you agree with that? Like, that, I guess it depends also on the area that you're focusing. But obviously, to make an impact in many industries you need to learn how to use your voice right the power of your voice but by the way your quote was mind-blowing i love that <laughs> like the power of your voice and, and feel free to correct me if i butchered this needs to mirror the power of the dream that you have did i get that right yeah so you know it needs to match your dreams because if you have these big dreams and your voice is just little then it's like it's not gonna add up yeah <laughs> absolutely i love that that's really good I, i'll probably take that from you and, and quote you on that <laughs> But my, my version of what you shared, Crystal, which is very similar, is, is I see communication like an accelerant of dreams. So any mm. goal that we might have in our life, any ambition, whether the goal is family-related, relationship-related, health-related, spiritual-related, or even wealth, all of it's tied to communication. So when we learn how to communicate effectively, it allows us to get access to the right people and help move those dreams forward at a faster pace. And this is why I love the question, how would your life change if you're an exceptional communicator? Because for all of us, that answer is different. Some people want to be a great communicator to do well on a podcast, right? Like this one. Other people want to be great communicators, so they fight less with their significant other. Other people want to communicate better because when they travel a lot, they want to build relationships with strangers a lot faster so they can actually enjoy themselves in the countries that they're traveling to and get the right information from the locals. So we all have a different reason why communication matters to us. The burning desire is the same, but it manifests in different ways. And by reflecting on that question, we can find an answer that will motivate us to, to, to get it done and to work on our voice because it is the amplifier of our dreams. Absolutely. I love that. The amplifier of our dreams. Yeah. So along my journey, a big part of strengthening my voice was repetition, which, you know, my, the start of my YouTube videos, I literally had like written out every single word I love <laughs> and that. I had it, I had it next to the video and I was like reading and then, you know, it's like cutting out after every sentence. Cause I'm looking over and like, <laughs> <laughs> and I left them up because I tell my audience, because one of the main things, especially as women, I find a lot of women have blocks around their voices. Uh, the main thing they come to me about is using their voice. And they know that it was something I used to struggle with. So I found YouTube was the first way that I started communicating in this way and really using my voice. And 
for me, the biggest thing was just repetition and practice, like continuously showing up, even though it's uncomfortable, even though like I hated it for a while, I knew it was really something that I'm like, if there's so much fear around this, it's a sign that it's something that, you know, I want to overcome and focus on. So what other, um, what other tips do you have for absolute beginners? Like how I was. <laughs> Yeah, absolutely, Crystal. And and thanks for sharing that as well. I feel I feel when you share your story, it adds a lot more flavor to the episode because people are listening. They go like, mm. oh, that's me too. That's me too. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and I'm definitely in the same camp. I mean, when I started my YouTube channel, and I know people who might watch me now might find it hard to believe, but trust me, go watch my first videos. They suck. <laughs> like I was on a couch with no money. I was broke. Oh. I had no lighting. I was just like, hey, guys, uh, yeah, this is master. I felt like it looked like I was falling asleep in the video. So I wasn't that great at it. So I would start with a couple of things. The first one is acknowledging who we're doing this for. Because generally the why, especially in the context of, of the story that you had around, you know, posting on social, sharing those videos, the first step is really going, who is this for? Who am I trying to create impact for? Because when we have that who in mind, it can bear almost any how. So when we know the mm -hmm. who, we know the why, it's a lot easier for us to get the results we're looking for. So I'll give you an example with me. Why did I start posting videos? I mean, I really shouldn't be, Crystal. I was 22 <laughs> years old. I was uh, making YouTube videos on communication. I had a bachelor's degree in accounting. I had <laughs> no body for it to make any of this stuff. And very little expertise, frankly. I was just coaching people who are younger than me. So why did I do it? Did I do it for the executive? No. Even if, obviously, I'm grateful for them. They helped me pay my bills. But the, <laughs> the reason I did it was for the 15-year-old girl who couldn't afford a coach. Mm -hmm. I thought to myself, huh, like the next Elon Musk is probably some girl in some part of the world. <laughs> probably. And I was thinking, mm -hmm. like, when Elon was 15, was there anyone sharing free resources with that person? And I realized the answer was no, nobody was helping Elon when he was 15 because nobody cared about him. So I thought about the next Elon Musk. And I was in this weird dilemma in life, Crystal, where I was young enough for the 15-year-olds to relate to me. But I was also, I guess, I like to think so, competent enough to coach people who were older than me. So I said, if I don't share the videos, who else will? So I think that's a big part is really having a strong reason to do it. But the other reason that I think is a super easy way to get started, I mean, I got a bunch of tactics. Let's start with the easiest one. I'm not even going to ask people to post on social media today, Crystal. That's not even the intention. I think the first step is realizing that communication is a tool for impact. So what does that mean? Mm -hmm. Make a list of five people that you really care about in your life. People who already pour into it could be your mom, could be your sister, it could be like a nephew, it could be a, a client. When was the last time you sent them a video message? Mm. When was the last time you sent them a 20 second, hey, Crystal, just want to say I'm thinking about you. I love the work that you're doing with Real Talk. Keep doing the incredible work that you're doing. When was the last time we got that? And the answer <laughs> for most of us is zero. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah, that's beautiful. I find the biggest part of that is getting out of our egos and just our immediate fear and reality around our voice and making it about others. And I think when we shift through that mindset shift from ourselves, and even when I talk about manifesting and people are always like, I want this, I want this. When you shift it into what do other wants and how do I want to serve from the heart? That's really like it, I guess it makes the message bigger than the messenger. That's what I tell myself before I get on a stage. Cause I'm like, Oh my God, why am I doing this to myself again? And then I'm like, this is me in my ego, like making it about crystal. Who is this about? Right. It's not just about me. So I really like that. <laughs> I love it. The message needs to be more important is more important than the messenger. I love that. That's really awesome. <laughs> yeah. Cause that's the main thing. Like we're in our heads, just overthinking it. Right. And letting our fear control us and the ego, the ego is not a bad thing, but it's our identity. And we're like, Oh my God. But this fear is not actually like the ego's purpose is to keep us alive, but it's not, you know, getting in front of people and talking isn't going to kill us, but it's almost like our nervous systems are like in a panic, like where some, our lives are somehow being like 
what I would say to that, Crystal, especially I love what you said around – this is so great because you're like saying the same thing but in a different way that I'm learning a lot from this episode too, <laughs> so it's great, it, is the idea that you mentioned around how ego is to help us survive. I completely agree with that notion. But the other piece is that it also never goes away. So think about mm. this. Like let's say me and you are having lunch, okay, in Vancouver, let's say, and we're having lunch and Elon Musk calls me. And I pick up, and Elon Musk goes, oh, you know, Brent, I really like your YouTube channel. Uh, can you come coach me tomorrow? Would I be scared? Yeah. Would I be worried? Absolutely. There's always a level where we're always going to be scared. So I don't see it as trying to run away from the fear, trying to get rid of it, kind of similar along the lines of what you're saying. But my version of it is kind of think of it like a boxing match where one side of the match, or one side of the ring rather, is the fear, the anxiety, the stress around communication. And the other side of the ring is the message. Why is it important for us to share it? And the goal is not for the fear to leave the ring, but rather make sure that when your message and your fear meet in the middle of that match, that your message wins the match, that your message gets the knockout punch. And that's the way I've always seen the relationship between fear and message. Wow, I love that. <laughs> that's a really good like way to look at it when it comes up. Because yeah, the thing with fear is that it's always there, right? When I first started, I'm like, I can't wait till this fear is just gone and I've defeated it, but it's always there. So it's more managing, managing it when it comes up and learning how to show up anyways, even when it's there. So absolutely. Mm -hmm. And what would you recommend for, say, someone like me, who I've been using my voice now for a few years, uh, mostly online and giving speeches and things, but if I wanted to take it to the next level, what do you think some focuses would be? Like, would it be learning pronunciation, taking some singing lessons, or how would you take it like a ne <laughs> next level up? <laughs> or just I, I love how no, no, it's great, Chris. I love how open-minded you are. Here's what I would say. I would start by <laughs> celebrating all the progress that you've made. Like, I've had a chance to look at your YouTube channel, too, and a, and a few of the things that you do. Mm -hmm. And it's incredible to see all the success that you've had. So, And I feel that, you know, my coach tells me this all the time. And I suck at this, by the way. So I'm giving myself advice as <laughs> I'm giving you it, too, or the people of your profile, which is whatever we appreciate appreciates more. In the sense of mm -hmm. when we take the time to really celebrate the impact, the transformation that we already, we're already creating for other people, that helps open the door for more opportunity, for more success. So that's the first thing I would say. Mm -hmm. But with that out of the way, let's get into the more advanced things. I would say <laughs> after we celebrate the progress, I would really start to ask the deeper questions, which is the tail end of our personal brands. Who do we want to be in the next five to 10 years? And a lot of us think of it in the context of finances or health or relationships. We might see a CEO. We might see a thought leader we really admire. I don't know, like uh, Gabrielle Bernstein or, uh, or Oprah or Brene Brown or something. But we don't compare the communication skills between who we are today and who that person is. So one thing I've mm -hmm. done with myself, and I'm still a work in progress, I think we all are at the end of the day, where I'm always constantly looking at the personal brands I really admire, Gary Vaynerchuk, Seth Godin, I'm a big fan of Bernie Brown's work as well, and, I, and Marissa Pierre, I really like what she does. And I ask mm -hmm. myself, how are these individuals communicating in every setting, and how can I get better to get to that level? Of, of brand, of impact, of message. And I call this communication goal setting. So if I was you, I mean, the, I mean, you're already great, but I would say the next step is to say, who is the personal brand that I want to emulate more of? And how do I mm -hmm. study and spend more time in their communication and take a couple of nuggets from them? I'll give you a simple example here to keep things simple. I'm a big fan of Gary Vaynerchuk's ability to relate to anybody. Like, it's crazy mm -hmm. if you really think about it, how he's able to talk to a CEO of a Fortune 500 company and relate to that person. And then if a seven-year-old comes up to him and says, Gary, can I have a, uh, like a picture? Because <laughs> I saw you on TikTok. He immediately is able to shift his energy mm -hmm. to that seven-year-old girl. And I think that's absolutely world-class, something I try to emulate myself. Mm, that's great advice. Thank you for that. And of course. And for the reminder to celebrate as well, because I, it's something I'm constantly working on because like, for example, I just 
uh, released a book last week and literally Congrats. right after, wow. thank you. <laughs> See, I'm just like, well, whatever, release the book. And then I'm like, right after it happens, going about my day, like, okay, next project. And I'm like working my ass off that day. I talked to my mom. She's like, well, what are you doing? I'm like, oh yeah, well, I have this other project I need to like work on right away. I'm just glad that's like over with it's out in the world. And now I can start to focus on this. She's like, can you just slow down and like celebrate a bit, but we can be so hard on ourselves. Like, oh, I can always like be the next level. Right. Even with communication. Like there's always so much work to do and then we can easily forget to actually sit back and be like, we've actually come a pretty far away. Oh yeah. And that's for both of us, by the way, I'm, I'm telling you advice I should be implementing myself since you asked for <laughs> you specifically. So, <laughs> so we're all in the same camp here. Don't worry. Do you have any tools or exercises that you, that you give any of your clients or like, for example, um, for me teaching meditation. I know breathing is a big part of speaking. And right now I'm actually practicing a speech that I'm going to be giving. Uh, I'm going to be touring actually across America. Amazing. <laughs> the, yeah, this winter. And I'm going to be talking more than I've ever talked before. So I'm hoping that I'm going to feel like an expert at the end. That's what I tell myself when I get nervous. I'm like, well, when I'm like 10 events in, it's going to be like, I'm going to be feeling pretty good about it. Um, so one thing that I notice when I'm practicing my speech, though, is that sometimes when I get into something, I kind of get out of breath. So mm. do you feel that breathing is like a really big part of speech or do you have any other kinds of exercises that works for clearer communication? Of course, Chris. So let me start by acknowledging you. I love how humble you are. <laughs> You're so <laughs> humble. You're like, yeah, you know, I'm touring. I hope I do a great job. I was like, yeah, I'm pretty sure you're going to do a great job. So, so, well, so thank you. Yeah, of course. I, I appreciate your humility. That's awesome. Here, here's what I would say. I definitely think breathing is important, though I'm pretty sure you're probably better at it than I am at, at explaining this. So so let me jump into to three strategies that I think will, will really serve the audience who's probably already heard your, your incredible tips on, on breathing and how to meditate more effectively. Something I stink at, by the way. <laughs> so, so let's go into those three. I would say the first thing, especially for your keynotes coming up, I would practice presentations like a jigsaw puzzle. So what does that mean? I'm sure we all know what a jigsaw puzzle is. You know, those toys we used to play as kids and some of us obviously still still, still play them because they're fun. The question we need to ask ourselves, Crystal, is whenever we build a jigsaw puzzle, which pieces do we start with first? And most of the times we start with the edges. And the reason we start with the corner pieces is because they're easier to find in the box, right? You know, there's like a box, you pick them out, there's like they got the little edges to them, build the edges, and then we work our way into the middle. And I'm sure you're, you're, you're probably thinking, okay, what, what does this have to do with communication, <laughs> right? So the answer to that is the opposite is what we often do in communication. So we have a keynote coming up, we have a presentation coming up, so what do we do? We start with the middle first. So we shove a bunch of things in our presentations, we get to the presentation, we ramble throughout the whole thing, and then the ending sounds something like this, uh, 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 yeah, thanks. Not the right approach. So instead what I recommend is treat your presentations like a jigsaw puzzle. Start with the edges first. Do the introduction 25, 50 times until it's absolutely perfect. Just the intro. Because you might have like a 30, 45 minute keynote or something, depending on where you're speaking at, which state you're in. So instead, you just want to focus all of your energy on just the intro because your momentum builds up really quickly. Because if you do the intro like 20 times, it only takes like an hour to do that. You'll go, wow, my introduction is solid. And then that momentum builds into the conclusion, which is the next part. What's a great movie with a terrible ending? Last time I checked, terrible movie, right? And then we do 25, 50 times the close, and then we work our way through the middle. And that would be the advice I would share. Wow. Yeah, that's really helpful because I feel like I'm like, hey, what's the introduction? I'll just get through that really quickly and then focus on the main points. So I'll try that approach. And most of these questions are like for myself, but I know that it'll help my audience as well. <laughs> yeah, of course. They're I'm like, I'm kind of selfish right now. I'm just wondering for my own, for my own uh, gain, but yeah. <laughs> <laughs> uh, yeah. And it's such a big topic. Whenever I just even casually mention like my journey and my voice, I, I get so much feedback from my audience. Can you talk more on this and expand? So I really appreciate you sharing your journey and some helpful advice with us. Um, do you have anything else that you feel like sharing with, with my audience and also where can they find you? Where can they dive into your world a little bit more? Absolutely, Crystal. Pleasure to be on. I would say the two other exercises I would share 
is 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 a part of my easy three. So one of the easy threes that we talked about is the video messages, right? Spend every day, send three video messages to people that you really appreciate in your life. And that will help us see communication for what it is, which is a tool for impact, a tool for change. So that's the first thing mm -hmm. that people could do. And it's also great if you have a business to send video messages to your clients. It's just great. People will, you'll get a lot of referrals for doing nothing, mm -hmm. really. Just like <laughs> sending appreciation and love. That's the first one. Second one is the random word exercise. Take a random word like smoothie, like a bear, like phone, and create random presentations out of thin air. What I always tell mm -hmm. people is if we can make sense out of nonsense, we can make sense out of anything. So spend a couple of times a day. You can do this with your family, nieces, nephews, kids, if you have any for those who are listening. It's fun to do it with them. Make it a family event and do this like a few minutes a day and you'll get a lot better at it. And the last one is question drills. We get asked questions all the time in our lives. And I'm sure, especially as a thought leader, you get asked a ton of questions, especially with the book touring and everything that you're doing. <laughs> What about this? What about this? What about this? So question drills allow us to be proactive rather than reactive to the questions that the world asks us, Crystal. Mm -hmm. So all we have to do is for five minutes every day, let's think of one question that we think the world will ask us about our expertise, about our mission, about our message or vision, and try and find an answer to that question. But if we do that once a day for a year, we'll have answered 300 and 65 questions about our expertise and will be unbeatable. Wow, that's powerful. Yeah, thank you for that. I love it. Uh, I actually just met someone a few days ago that teaches improv too, and that just reminded me. Uh, I'm like, maybe I should try some improv classes too, <laughs> because being on the spot and just practicing in that way, like you said too, is um, just being more prepared, I guess, but not being reactive to just two of the questions. I think that's really helpful. Absolutely. Amazing. Well, thank you so much, Brendan. Uh, how can we find you? What's your website or social media? Yeah, absolutely, Crystal. Great to be on. So I'd say two easy ways to keep in touch. So the first one is definitely the YouTube channel. You can just check out Master Talk in one word, and you'll have access to hundreds of free videos on how to communicate and share ideas. And then the second way to keep in touch is my website, which is Rockstar Communicator dot com where i host a free training on zoom every few weeks that you can register for thank you so much for sharing and thank you for being here with us of course crystal the pleasure was absolutely mine thanks for having me